I'm shooting on the Pixis, so we're back to the DJI Focus system. I recently made one talking head video and I had cameras going for two hours at a time. The first camera was the Sony FX3 and that was for two hours of footage at XAVC-S was about 87 gigabytes. This camera, the Pixis, filming in 6K open gate at eight to one compression was 765 gigabytes. So after I came home and I put those both on my computer, I immediately realized I had some testing to do. The Sony footage was more compressed, obviously, than the Pixis footage, but I wanna find where that sweet spot where the Pixis footage isn't 700 gigs for two hours, but it is still usable to the point where I'm not going to be losing any quality. In this video, let's go over a couple of different codecs with the Pixis in particular. I'm going to say just a quick story and I'll jump around using those different qualities and we'll see if we can tell the difference. One thing I learned at work in October was to not be afraid to speak up, even if it's an unpopular opinion, especially if it's an unpopular opinion. This had to deal with some social posts and I feel like they weren't as impactful as they could be. However, if we were going to course correct and change some things, it would be a huge undertaking. Full disclosure here, a copywriter was writing the copy and then I was actually making these social posts but I think the social posts started to look more like ads. So whenever someone saw it in the feed, they just immediately thought, oh, that's an ad and just scrolled right past it. This eventually got to the point where if the client took their phone and just took a snapshot of what they were doing and uploaded it to their social media accounts, that would get more engagement than the posts that the copywriter took time to develop a topic and come up with something and then hand all that content off to me where I would go out and either shoot something or design something or assemble things and then post that to their Instagram or you know LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever it was to. I wanna be seen as someone who can be trusted with the client's budget, not only to spend it wisely, but to spend it efficiently for any leads or engagement that they're looking for. So what we're going to do is make some adjustments going forward. They're gonna start as small adjustments. So we're not just, you know, course correcting and over correcting, but we're going to slowly make changes so that maybe in the future, we stop making things look like ads and make things look a little bit more unpolished, if that makes sense, like not bad, but something that someone could pick up their phone and you know snap a picture and write a quick caption and just upload it. There's more humanity in that than it is like really taking your time and like almost making an ad and putting it on social media. There's a weird thing where if you're going to be spending time making something, it's easy to just go overboard. It's very common for a social media video to just have that crazy animated text just pop over it. Um, I've made them before and they've done well, but when it comes to client expectations and client videos, I don't wanna be seen as like a TikToker. I wanna be seen as someone who makes professional videos. The difficult part is professional videos creep into that advertising space where TikToker, uh, you know, more casual videos lend themselves for more people to watch them because they feel like someone's just picking up their phone and making something. So it's a very weird, delicate balance to strike between those two. Another reason I didn't wanna speak up, honestly, is I don't wanna be the bearer of bad news. If something's not performing well, I don't wanna be associated with that thing that's not performing. And performing best doesn't necessarily mean getting the most engagement or the most likes or the most watch time. It means getting the most meaningful likes, the most meaningful engagement, and really resonating with the audience, not just like flash in the pan content that gets a ton of views and then dies off. We would rather post something that is more meaningful to someone and uh, is more valuable. This is now on the radar of things to improve in the new year. And with the year coming to a close, it may be a good time to just take a look at what you've made this year, see what really performed well, see what maybe didn't perform well and how you can either tweak it or just completely eliminate it altogether. The main takeaway here is if I wasn't comfortable with my team at work, I probably just wouldn't have said anything and just let what we were doing uh, just kind of fade 
into next year. Also, sometimes clients think they want one thing when you actually learn what they're trying to do. They actually need something completely different. So what was working a year ago may not work today. It may not work in a year, uh, but to always be looking and monitoring what you're doing, especially when someone's paying you to do it, is a very valuable skill. And again, having a great team that you can communicate with clearly really does pay off here. So those were all the codecs and the Pixis for constant bitrate and constant quality. Could you tell the difference? Before we jump into the conclusion, I would like to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, Motion Array. Editing is by far one of the most time consuming parts of making videos for me, and Motion Array helps speed that up. Motion Array has tons of high quality video templates, footage, photos, music, sound effects, and more that you can use in your personal and commercial projects. Motion Array has thousands of different assets and they break it down so it's easy to find exactly what you're looking for. They have motion graphic overlays, loops, animations, transitions, and more to help add interest to your videos. There are video templates that help you save time making titles, infographics, logo reveals, transitions, and more. You can also sort video templates by your editor like Resolve, Premiere, After Effects, and Final Cut. Motion Ray also has collections of stock footage so you can pick out multiple clips from the same scene to help you tell your story. Motion Array also has an automated tool to help you automatically clear copyright issues so you can remove the headache of copyright claims. To try out Motion Array, you can sign up for a free account and have access to a limited amount of resources. Or if you want access to the whole catalog, you can sign up for a monthly or yearly account. If you want to do so, you can save 50 bucks if you use the link in my description. Thank you Motion Array for sponsoring this video. Okay, recording, recording. After looking at the Pixis footage with the log, the grade, and then adjusting the grade exposure higher than I normally would in all of the different codecs, I don't think I could tell a difference between the different codecs when it comes to talking head footage in controlled lighting. Q5 and 12 to 1 held up just fine, even if I screwed up the exposure by two stops in post, like using the global gain in Resolve and not using the camera raw to adjust the ISO. That's kind of like the worst case scenario. And even in the worst case scenario, I was still able to really adjust the footage even in an incorrect way and still get a decent looking result. Again, if you're doing that, something has gone terribly wrong, but with the raw footage, it's much easier to have something go wrong and then recover it in post than it is with the FX3 footage where you really have to nail it in camera. For lighting that you have no control over, that is one area that really I need to dig a little bit deeper in. And I have a video going over the ISO ranges and the dynamic range versus noise and favoring the highlights or shadows. So I will be having a whole other video going over that on my channel. So be sure to subscribe and check back for that one. For the past few years, I've gotten really used to grading the Sony footage on the FX3. XAVC-S will get you about 100 megabits per second, and the XAVC-SI will get you 240 megabits per second. The equivalent to the highest quality on the FX3 is actually the lowest quality on the Pixis. Keep in mind, we are not recording raw on the FX3. So what you see is what you get on the FX3. While you do have more flexibility in post with the B raw on the Pixis. To dig a little bit deeper on the Pixis, the Blackmagic B raw 3 to 1 4K 16 by 9 footage is 144 megabytes per second. That may sound familiar to the 100 megabits per second on the FX3, but it is way off. I'm gonna keep things simple here, and so just stay with me, but one byte is a grouping of eight bits. So the three to one, 144 megabytes, if you compare that to the Sony footage, we have to multiply that by eight, and we get 1,152 megabytes per second. So the highest XABC SI footage on the FX3 is 240 megabits per second in 24 frames per second. The same comparable resolution and frame rate on the Pixis is 1,152. But more of a fair fight would be to compare the ProRes RAW to the B RAW. This is where things get a little more even. 
I tested out the 4.2 at 24 frames per second with the FX3 and the Ninja 5. The bitrate of the ProRes RAW was 661 megabits per second. The ProRes RAW HQ was 1050 megabits per second. If we compare the same resolution and frame rate of the B RAW on the Pixis, this is closer to three to one and five to one. So if you have a FX3 and you have a Ninja 5, this is close to shooting the 4K 16 by nine on the Pixis. So after all this testing, I've learned that the 12 to one or the Q5 is more than enough for simple scenes like talking heads where there won't be much camera movement. In some cases, I could see the lesser compressions being helpful, but it's still a little bit overkill for what I need it for right now. The extra editing latitude is nice to have, and now I'm much more confident in recording in those more compressed codecs, especially for talking heads and for B-roll. Like I said, I have a video going over shooting low light with the Pixis and what I learned, so be sure to subscribe and check back for that one when it goes live in the future. Here are my first impressions of using the Pixis as a Sony shooter, if you'd like to see that perspective. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.